Ho, ho, ho! Christmas is here, guys, and this is our 2023 Christmas special. For the first recipe, we're making slow roasted lamb legs, bone in. It's going to be so tender that it falls off the bone, rich, gamey, a little bit spicy, served together with a bed of broccoli, honey roasted carrots, some delicious, beautiful, silky mashed potatoes, and a natural brown sauce. All right, so for this particular roast lamb leg recipe, there are many variants, okay? Some may like a sort of roasted till it's nice and pink on the inside. Now that's a fast cook, okay? But we're taking it slow, like I'm talking fall off the bone kind of tender. That is going to require a good five, six hours in cook, okay? Now, I'm going to be making sort of an Asian flavor to it because I love my chilies and I love spice, okay? Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to toast up some spice. I have here a tablespoon of coriander seeds and we're going in with a tablespoon of black pepper. Get that nice and toasted so you get all that nice aromatics that come off of the coriander seeds and the black pepper. All right, once you start to smell, the coriander and the black pepper, transfer them into a pesto and mortar. Together with this, I'll be adding in a tablespoon of salt. A couple of sprigs of rosemary, remove the stems. Okay, now, we grind the black pepper together with the coriander seeds and the rosemary and salt. Yeah, let's get this into a sort of fine-ish powder. This is what you're looking at right now. So the black pepper, the coriander seeds have sort of been grinded into like coarse powder. And the rosemary have also delivered its flavor and aroma, all that uh, essential oils into the seasoning. Now, we're going in with about five cloves of garlic, pound. All right, once the garlic is nice and mashed up, here, I have gochujang. So gochujang is going to give that mild, back of the throat spiciness uh, that I love. But at the same time, it's also gonna give that natural sweet flavor of chili. And we're going in with about three to four tablespoons of olive oil. Stir everything together, get it nice and evenly mixed up. And this is what you're looking for. It's full of flavor, delicious. If you can't find coriander seeds, you can also replace the coriander seeds with cumin, but you cut the amount in half, okay? Because cumin seeds are very, very strong in flavor. We've got our bone-in leg of lamb. Get yourselves a pair of gloves. It's one of those dishes where, you know, you can start in the morning, put it in the oven, and then it'll be ready for you by evening. It takes a long time in the oven, but to prep, it doesn't really take very much. You can prep it the night before, chuck it in the oven the day um, of the meal in the morning, and by evening, you're ready with a luxurious, decadent, tender. Take a paring knife, just make a couple of incisions. These incisions uh, will help sort of flavor penetrate into the flesh. There we go. Get this beautiful wet rub. Slap it on and just rub it all around the lamb. This is a wet rub that you can use for either a slow roast or a quick roast. Why? The other reason I love using the gochujang is because it also gives that nice deep red color. Wherever you have made an incision earlier, just use your fingers and push in some of that marinade, some of that rub, and this will help flavor the inside as well. We're making a bed of vegetables to go uh, well, not really vegetables, but mainly some onions. Cut them whole, lay them at the bottom of the roasting pan. Now, what this will do is, this will prevent the lamb from resting directly at the bottom of the roasting pan. Also, by the time we're done with this whole roast, the onions will also contribute to a very nice and sweet sort of gravy. Now, I have here a whole number of garlic, put this in. Little drizzle of olive oil, this is so that it doesn't burn. Get this beautiful leg of lamb in there. Don't waste any of this marinade, the wet rub. Just smear it all around. All right, so we've put it inside the oven at 200 degrees to sort of sear the exterior for half an hour. And then later on, we're going to remove it, drop the temperature to about 150 degrees Celsius, wrap it up in thin foil and shove it back again. Okay, now we're adding in 
warm stock. Now, this really depends on the size of your baking tray or your baking roasting pan, all right? Mine is sort of big and wide, so it takes more liquid. Uh, but if you're using something that's a little bit smaller, you can do 600 ml um, or maybe half a litre. The whole idea is to have the moisture at the bottom of the roasting pan but not submerging the lamb inside the stock. Cut up your aluminium foil. Nice, get it all nice and tucked in. Beautiful. And we're going to return this into the oven, reduce the temperature to 150 degrees and this goes back into the oven for about four and a half, five hours. All right, so now, while we wait, it's a lot of waiting to do, so it's an opportunity for you to create a lot of sides, to prepare a lot of sides to go with your lamb leg. One of the sides I'm gonna do, because we're gonna get this beautiful, rich gravy at the bottom, mashed potatoes, okay? I absolutely love mashed potatoes. If your potatoes are peeled, cut them into even sizes into a pot of water, get a pinch of salt, season the potatoes and just let that boil until they get nice and softened. A beautiful side that I'll be serving together with the lamb is honey roasted carrots. Just half your carrots. Now ideally you want to have carrots that are more or less the same size and this just makes the cooking a lot more even. Carrots inside a roasting dish or a casserole. Now, I've lined the casserole with a little bit of parchment paper and because this is going to be, you know, sort of with honey, it will tend to stick. So the lining of parchment paper just makes the cleaning process a whole lot easier. Olive oil, some cracked, freshly cracked black pepper. I have a little bit of sage leaf. Now, this is a um, sort of something I saw and I thought I could use it. Yeah, sage and carrots, they go very well together. Honey, salt. Now, just use your fingers, toss everything together. Make sure everything is evenly coated. Beautiful. And this is going to go in the oven together with the lamb. So we've got about two hours before the lamb is ready. I've put the carrots in. The carrots might take about 45 minutes to about an hour because we're doing it low and slow at 150 degrees. Yeah, but from time to time, because the carrots are a bit full in um, the dish, we will sort of stir them uh, every once in a while to make sure they cook evenly. Once you see that your potatoes are fork tender, wow, it's good. We're going to discard the liquid. And what I'm going to start to do is press these potatoes through this sieve. Now, this will make for a really nice, smooth, silky mashed potatoes. Now, you want to get this done while it's hot, yeah? Or else, it's going to be very, very difficult to pass it through a sieve. About 80 grams of butter. Cut them into smaller cubes and into the mash it goes. And along with that, I'm going to be adding in some cream. And here we go. This is where we combine everything together. It's a little bit of work, but trust me, it's a huge payoff. Look at that. Beautiful. Touch more salt. Be careful not to over season. There we go. All right. So this is after about four and a half hours of a wait. It's time to unwrap. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I've checked the meat and it is actually really fork tender at this point in time. So now we're just going to tint it for a good half an hour and let it rest in its own juices in there. Also going to prepare a little bit of greens because you need your greens. All right, once you see the water start to boil, we can put in the broccoli. A few pinches of salt and just let this cook up. It wouldn't take too long. You don't want to overcook your broccoli. I waited till the very last minute to do this because I'm going to be serving it straight away. As soon as you see the broccoli start to turn in color, start to turn to a nice sort of dark green, yet yeah, you can remove them already. Now for the sauce, I'm going in, this is about maybe 75, 80 grams of butter. We're going to make a roux. The roux will make the sauce nice and thick. But three to four tablespoons of flour. Now, this really depends on how much of gravy you're looking to thicken up. I've got quite a bit there uh, because I used about a litre of stock in the roast. So I've got quite a fair bit of liquid to thicken up. Remove this beautiful lamb. Okay, get that onto your serving plate. This is so, so tender. Now, I have a sift. Put it over and we're going to pour this liquid into the pot. 
with the roux, together with all those vegetables in there, and use the back of the wooden spoon to just press down. Because in here we've got all this garlic and onion that have softened beautifully, and that is also going to add flavor and texture to our sauce. And get this going, bring this up to a gentle simmer, and that will sort of thicken the sauce. It's time to plate up. Get that beautiful mash in there. Carrots. Last but not least, your brochnies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is done. The slow roasted lamb leg. Enjoy. The flesh, look at that. Look at how tender that is. Get that gravy all around. Mm. Not to a point where it becomes powdery. You can, still, you can still see the juices within the meat. Look at that, it's nice and moist. And that's what you want from a beautiful fall off the bone roasted lamb leg. You can use this recipe the exact same wet rub and make a boneless lamb leg, yeah? That way, if you want to do, let's say, um, not roast till tender, but roast till a rare or medium rare, that really depends on the weight of your lamb itself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this content. If you do, please do click the like and subscribe. Um, I would like to wish you from the bottom of my heart, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Happy holidays and uh, enjoy time with the loved ones.